Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, hope you're doing well. Let's talk about Kazoo. I mentioned in a previous video where I was talking about dealers closing, that I would do a separate video on Kazoo. It needs its own separate video really because there is quite a lot to talk about. Uh, but basically things aren't going very well for them. And I don't think they're gonna get much sympathy from the used car trade, to be honest, and maybe not from the public. But before we dive into exactly what's going on right now, let's go back to the beginning. Let's figure out how Kazoo, Kazoo, Apologies if you prefer a different pronunciation, I just call it kazoo. Came about where we are now and what the future looks like. So kazoo was founded by serial entrepreneur Alex Chesterman. He's someone who sold Love Film. Do you remember Love Film used to be on there? He used to be able to do like a kind of TV service for watching, a bit like a, an older version of Netflix. He was also either the founder or heavily involved, I can't remember exactly which it was, with Zoopla, the online kind of state agency search engine type thing. Um, he made a lot of money out of that. He then moved into the used car sector um, following his usual kind of disruptor path, planning to make big changes in the used car sector. And he wasn't holding back when he was talking about the current used car market, calling most used car dealers basically antiquated, out of date, and generally didn't have very nice things to say about them. But luckily for us, Alex Chesterman and his new kazoo was here to solve all of that for us with its online-led kind of system. They sprung onto the scene in 2019 and they got a lot of kind of exposure, I guess, through the pandemic because they were still able to go out and deliver cars. This was their setup. You would buy the car online. They would deliver it to you and they could make it all kind of contact free, etc. So that gave them a real boost. They've spent an absolute fortune on marketing in sports. So you've seen them with darts players, football teams, rugby teams, absolutely everywhere getting their name out. So they've done well in marketing and getting their name out to the public. They've bought up absolutely loads of used car dealership sites and car sales groups to expand their footprint in the UK. And from the outside, everything looked great. They were this huge car giant. They kept getting investment from people and everything was going great. In fact, things were going so well that Chesterman took the company public on the New York Stock Exchange under a kind of special kind of deal. It's called a SPAC, an SPAC. I'm not gonna go into talking as if I know what that means. If you wanna look that up, you can do. But essentially it meant the company was valued at around about seven billion pounds and saw a massive influx of cash from investors. In fact, things were going so well, it seemed such a great investment in Kazoo from the 18th of December, 2020, when it went public to the following February. In just a few months, people had made 20% profits. And that from somewhere that I read meant that you'd be looking at about 120% profit year on year, which sounds amazing, doesn't it? Sadly, it hasn't lasted. One thing to point out here, interestingly, when a company goes live, usually you get a massive influx of people investing. They wanna get into this company. If things are going well, that is gonna be the cheapest opportunity you get to buy that stock, assuming it's always gonna go up. I'm sure we'd all love to have had, you know, a thousand pounds in Apple or Microsoft at its early days because you'd be a multi-millionaire at this point. So there's a massive influx of cash. The people who already had shares in the business, their shares go up in value because people are, bidding and bidding and bidding, going up, willing to pay more for these shares just to get in. So it's bizarre that Alex Chesterman, as the founder and CEO, had sold a hundred million pounds worth of stocks just a few months before it went public on the New York Stock Exchange. Very strange, and I'm sure there's many reasons you may do that, but if you have faith in your company and think that it genuinely can deliver on its promises, you would keep your stock and wait for it to go up in value. I'm sure you could wait a few months to profit an extra 20%, taking out 100 million, but you could have had 120 million. Is that a sign that Chesterman knew that the company wasn't gonna do as well as he'd sort of sold the idea to these investors? I don't know. I don't wanna suggest anything, but I think most people would agree that it is a bit of a strange coincidence. Since then, the company has just been absolutely burning through money. They are doing more and more sales, but not making potentially as much money. They spent loads of money on sites. They spent loads of money on advertising. There's loads of logistics involved. They just simply aren't making money. So they've gone through round after round of drumming up new investment, 
of watering down their existing shares so that more people can buy in just to get more money into the company, meaning shareholders are losing out again. And that brings us to this point where they've just done a massive restructuring of their debt. I think essentially, and I could be wrong here, swapping debt for shares basically so that they didn't have to pay off some of the debt, a debt of about 600 million at that point. And it comes around to now where they're saying that although they've just done that, they're not sure they're gonna make it through the year at the rate they're burning through cash. So by the summer, they expected to be completely insolvent because they're burning money much faster than they are making it. Which brings us to now. So let's have a quick look at an article I've got here from Yahoo Finance titled, Used Car Retailer Kazoo Seeks Cash Lifeline to Escape Insolvency. I'm gonna to go to this article because there's loads of articles out there from cars, sales related sites um, to just general rags, you know, that are just talking about financial markets, talking about Kazoo as an investment. And there's a lot of kind of fractured information but this kind of talks us through quite a lot of the interesting stuff. So let's just read through and we'll, we'll get an idea of what's going on. The troubled used car supermarket Kazoo is scrambling for a lifeline as it sinks further into a funding crisis. The online dealer hopes to persuade shareholders to agree to an urgent cash injection, but is preparing contingency measures. Source involved in the discussion said all options are on the table, including new investors, a sale, or a breakup of the company and asset sales. However, if fresh funds can't be found, then it will be forced to consider administration. A team of restructuring and insolvency experts is being called in to navigate the crisis. Kazoo revealed in December that it could run out of capital by the middle of this year. The crunch is looming after years of heavy losses amid a sharp downturn in the second-hand car market. I'm not entirely sure that's completely correct. Yes, some of the values have gone down, but has demand? I'm not so sure. It is the latest setback for a company that this outspoken founder, Alex Chesterman, claimed was primed to shake up an industry he accused of being stuck in the past. In December, despite sweeping cost cuts, Kazoo was forced into a controversial debt for equity swap that secured its future but inflicted heavy losses on existing shareholders. The deal handed control to a group of bondholders led by American hedge fund Viking Investors, who forgave $630 million of debt in return and agreed to provide $200 million of new borrowings. Those still holding shares were left with a combined equity stake of just 8%, in a company whose value had collapsed by 99%. At the same time, Chesterman stood down from the board along with four other directors. Then, just days later, however, Kazoo stunned the stock market with a bombshell announcement that it was facing a cash crunch. The company warned that it was in danger of running out of funding in the first six months of 2024 unless it succeeded in raising additional capital. It said it expected to end the year with a cash pile of between 100 million and 115 million, an additional 20 to 30 million pounds worth of cars in stock. However, the company cautioned it was burning through 30 to 40 million pounds every quarter and restrictions on its lending agreements had meant it had to maintain cash cushions of 50 million pounds starting from the beginning of the year. So there we have it. Despite having just agreed some deal to restructure and get more money in, immediately they need to start looking for more money again. That usually, even to the business layman like myself, is not a good sign. You. <laughs> Most people are in business to make money, not lose it. And don't get me wrong, I'm not completely ignorant. I understand that businesses, especially on this scale, are not looking to make money within the first years. They don't expect to make money straight off the bat. They might be looking to think that at year five, they might start turning a profit. And from then on out, they're golden. Maybe at year seven, year 10, there are all things planned out, especially with these things. And people who are investing are investing in the future. They're not investing in what the company is right now. It's what they're expecting it to do, which is where Alex Chesterman's kind of history and having done well in business before helped him kind of get this investment in. He's really sold this idea to American investors that this is going to be the new thing. The British used car market is absolutely terrible. All the used car dealers out there don't have a clue what's going on. You know, they're just stuck in the past. They don't know how to do online. Well, if Kazoo's done one thing for the used car market, it's to make everyone up their game. Even I, as someone who stocks 40 cars, now can sell a car online and deliver it to you and just make the whole thing completely hassle-free. You can do that all online if you wanted to. You can email us, you can reserve it online via AutoTrader. Frankly, everyone's stepped up their game, especially the big boys in the market. So they don't really have that USP that they thought they had to start off with, the kind of unique selling point. And I think they're feeling the crunch now. They've just heavily invested, 
expecting things to pan out. Alex Chesterman has got the investment in. He sold his shares. He's going to back away going, oh, yeah, I don't really know why it's not going so well now. But yeah, I understand you just haven't seen my vision. It hasn't quite panned out. You're not patient enough. Whereas I think a lot of used car dealers uh, like myself and people who run car dealer groups much, much bigger all had this idea that customers still want to come in and feel and touch the cars, something tangible, rather than just ordering something online and having it delivered. Even if they provided a good service, which I'm sure they have on the vast majority of their um, sales, I know on some people have been disappointed. And if you can't deal with a person face to face, you can't bring it back to the branch and do all those things, then it's probably not going to flourish. Someone who probably has got this right and is one that we should probably keep an eye on more would be Cinch, because it's owned by Constellation Group, who also own We Buy Any Car, uh, they own Marshalls Group, and they own BCA. So they have got their own entire ecosystem buying stock in. They can send it to Cinch, and if Cinch don't want it, they can send it to BCA, and they've got Marshalls where they can retail stuff as well, and even more stock will come back in that can go into the auctions. They are a self-feeding beast, so they've done that very intelligently. And although they've taken massive losses in the last year or so, I think you know they're the ones to look out for. Those are just kind of adjustments they're making, figuring out how this model's going to work. Like I said for Gazoo, when they bring these new things, they're not expecting it to be profitable right off the bat. These are plans they're putting in place for the future. So if we come back to this conversation in a year's time, I would say Cinch will be here and Kazoo most definitely will not be. I've seen reports of people buying a car from Kazoo and it's got a glass panoramic roof. It's got a crack in it, which is incredibly expensive to fix. It's a big piece of glass. Uh, you normally talking about 1500 to 2000 pounds. Well, Kazoo's working to very slim margins in the first place, not even that much. And they've just put a piece of vinyl over it to hide the back part that's cracked. Customers have picked up on this. There's even been reports of Kazoo selling cars that have been involved in an accident before and they haven't declared it to the customer. These are things that get overlooked when you're running a very big and fast paced business. But is that the sort of place you want to be buying from? That's your choice. But there is an article here actually that says about Kazoo and Car Giant offering written off used cars to unsuspecting buyers and it even featured on dispatches so you could probably look that up. When it comes to buying a used car no matter who you're buying it from whether it's Kazoo or an independent dealer like myself it always pays to do a history check. The dealer can provide you with one but it's always nice to have a bit of peace of mind that you've done your own and I can highly recommend today's video sponsor which is Vehicle Score. If you head over to the Vehicle Score website, you can do this on your phone as well. And you can do what I've done, which is to save the website as a tab on your phone. So it's there as if it were an app. Click on that and it comes straight up. I need to input a registration. I can't think of any other than a van that's in my plumbing business, which is Victor X-Ray 66 Kilo Uniform Golf. We can get score. It's going to tell us from 1 to 999, the score of that car based on its M&T, history, mileage, age, and many other factors. Ours is 905. Out of 999 top marks, it's got good MOT history, gives us a load of information on vehicle details. You can log in as well and find out what the horsepower is, what the tax charge is. Uh, it's free to do that and all the information's there. Check the MOT history. Our MOT pass rate is 100% because we've always looked after ourselves. You can see the advisories on past ones. Looks like we've got a shock absorber and it's a slight misting of oil. It's got absolutely tons of stuff on here. It's even got an AI mechanic. So if you've got issues with your car, before you take it to a mechanic and find out what they say, you can go to the AI mechanic, type in issues. In fact, if you're looking at a car and you say, oh, I can see it's got about three millimeter of thickness left on the pads, you can ask AI mechanic, is that enough? And it will give you an answer. On top of that, if you're looking for a car because you live in a city, you need to know the ULES compliance. There's a button for that, click on it. That van is ULES compliant because it's Euro 6, I imagine which is very handy to know. And most importantly, before you hand over your money for that car, you want to check the history, make sure that it, like some of those Kazoo cars, it hasn't been written off before, it hasn't been to a salvage auction, whether it was actually written off or not, whether it's got outstanding finance on it still, these are things that happen as well. You can do their ultimate report plus, it's got 10,000 pounds worth of data guarantee. If you use my code, SHIFTINGMETAL20, when you check out, you get 20% off, making it under 10 pounds for ultimate peace of mind. If you were one of those early investors in Kazoo and you saw those early 20% returns, how would your investment be looking now? Well, let's have a look at the stock price currently. So it's $4.87, but it's 3.75% down just today. The last five days, well, it seems like it was actually up 15.9% over the last five days. One month, 
down by 3.56. You can see it's volatile up and down all the time, depending on the news that's coming out probably. But most importantly, if you had invested, let's say 10,000 pounds in Kazoo when it first was listed on the New York Stock Exchange, how much would your investment be worth now? Well, let's have a look at the whole lifespan of the stock. You can see this graph where it's really tanked down. You can see it started going up here and then it's kind of leveled out back where it was. And then these drops start coming probably when they were raising money again and now it's really fizzled out. You can see here, the stock is down 99.98%. So quick maths will tell you, if you'd invested 10,000 pounds in this absolutely stellar looking stock that was gonna make you all this money because they're such a huge disruptor, your 10,000 pounds would now be worth two pounds. That's all you'd have from your 10,000 pounds. If you wanted to draw out your investment, you would have two pounds. Even worse, imagine you'd invested 100,000 pounds it would now be worth 20 quid. Unbelievable. Um, Kazoo is currently still operating as this video goes live. They're saying that they're probably not going to last long and they're considering the fact that they're probably going to have to go into insolvency. My money is that they will not be here in 2025. Someone may step in. Maybe it'll be here in a smaller sense because someone steps in, buys it, asset strips and sells off all the physical locations and kind of restructures this and runs it in a different way. Maybe. I don't know. But Kazoo as we know it now, this car giant that's come in to step in and show us used car dealers how it's really done, is going down the toilet where it belongs, to be honest. So um, that is just my view on it. And if you are a car trader, then keep an eye out because the Kazoo lorries are going up for sale. Not only were they up for sale in the early days after they'd had, you know, 50,000 miles on them, pre-registered Mercedes-Benz 7.5 ton enclosed car transporters that they've bought to make this whole thing look flashy you can now buy them with zero miles on because they've had them bought, ordered, lined up, ready to go. And you know, they've still even got the graphics on. I was at BCA Nottingham actually and just saw a queue of about 30 of them. They haven't gone to Kazoo. They know they're not gonna you know, be using them, need them, have the money to pay for them. So they are going straight back out being remarketed. So if you're after a nice vehicle transporter, you might be able to get one of those cheap. But there you are. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe. I like doing these kind of news reports, especially on things like Kazoo, where, you know, they've offended the used car dealers and I'm here to defend our honor. Um, yeah, I like doing these kind of news updates. So if you do, make sure you subscribe. We've got loads more content, things like going to auctions and things like that as well. So that's this isn't all this channel is about. If you'd like any merchandise, like the cap or air fresheners that we sell, you can find those on shiftingmetal.co.uk. Also, just a quick reminder that I am raffling off my five liter V8 Mercedes SL500. Tickets are just two pounds, so if you want to enter, check out the link in the description. That is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.